has begun to come against anything that is contrary to God's will and purpose for your life today. Every gathering of the enemy, every plus of the enemy to against the gathering. Let's scatter it, that they will be scattered. Every plan for the enemy to steal the word from, from you. Any forces that will not allow the word of God to penetrate into your heart. Cast such forces out to the bottomless pit of fire. Let's commit as many vessels that God is going to use today. The messages. From the praises, the worship. That they will lead according to the auction that God will put his word in their mouth. That they will speak as an oracle of God. Commit yourself to the hands of God that you will not go home the same way you came. That God will do something new, something miraculous in your life. A word from the Lord can change your life forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we glorify your holy name. Lord, you say we are two or three are gathered, you are there in their midst. Lord, unto you we've gathered to seek your face. Father, you say when we will seek you, we will find you. And we find you in a new dimension today in Jesus' name. But in all that we will do, take control. No one here will go home the same way they came. You will touch every life. You will transform every heart and put your word in our heart in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Let's open our hymn. GHS 42. Two.
Upon our bless your name this very day. We praise you because of your word. Which you always give us in wisdom and in love. Which you give us so that you can prepare us for heaven. We pray that this very day what we share from the word of God will be of benefit to every one of us in Jesus name. Guide us into the rivers of living water in your world. Refresh us, enlighten us, teach us, and train us in the way we ought to go. In Jesus' name we pray. And God has so much for us in the word of God to make marriage a glorious possibility. And yet human beings have made it something bad and negative, something that, you know, makes you to suffer. Instead of the many promises and privileges we have in the Bible concerning marriage, Marriage and the family, the source or the essence or the center of marriage with many people is just their problems. And today we're talking on a major problem in marriage. When a man and a woman come together in matrimony, in wedlock or marriage, there are many things that bring problems into the marriage. But the number one, the central problem, is how to deal with money. And so this morning we're looking at the message, money and marriage. It can be a blessing if we have money. And yet it can be something that is not blessed but something very harmful if we don't know what to do with the money. Many things cause problems in families in relation to money. One, it could be because of an ambition on the side of the man or the woman to accumulate wealth. So the man is always outside working and you know robbing the family of fellowship and love and time and affection because he's always outside looking for money. He has an ambition to accumulate very much. Number two, it may be because of pressure from other people just for him to have more and more and more. Number three, what sometimes causes problem in families is because there is envy because he wants to live, the man wants to live the lifestyle of a Mr. Smith or Mr. Joel somewhere. Or it is a woman that is always looking at another woman and she wants to spend money like they are spending money. In Psalm 73 verses 2 and 3. Psalm 73 verses 2 and 3. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps were well nigh slipped, for I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And so it brings problems to the family when we do not just sit down together and discuss how we want to plan and budget and spend money, but we're always looking at another family to lead us in the way we ought to spend money. And 
papo bi nkan ti a se nipa wa ti bi a o se na ti nigba ta ba to ba je pe ebi miran la nwo gbon se na wa ti gbon se se nkan another reason for problems in money management or money um, finance management in the families because of pride o miran to tun ma ko wahala ti soro ninu ebi o na ni nipa ti eto tun owo ebi o na ni igberaga the desire to feel bigger than everybody around lati le ma fe lati ma fe ju awon to wa lai pa lo and in proverbs chapter 16 ninu we owo ri kerin ni logun we told him verse 5 aso fun ninu ese ikaru everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the lord olukuluku eniyan ti o gberaga li aya irira ni loju oluwa no hand join in hand they shall not be unpunished bi ati le fi owo so owo ki yo lu ki yo wa lai dia verse 8 in pride goes before destruction and an haughty spirit before it falls ese ikeji di logun igberaga ni saju iparun agidi okan ni saju isugu verse 19 better it is to be an open humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud ese ikokan di logun o san lati se onire le okan pelu awon talaka ju ati ba awon agberaga pin ikogun i told you that problems come into marriage on the money uh, spending because of one ambition to accumulate e mo ti so fun yin pe e owo ma mu wahala wa sinu ebi e ni ni igba miran ikini ni tori e ilepa lati fe ku awon because of pressure to keep on having more there is a possessive attitude on the family e keje iyo lenu lati o de yi pe ki enan ki o le ma ni si elesi mu wahala wa sinu ebi because of envy wanting to be like the other family e keta ni tori ilara mo fe da for because of pride wanting to feel bigger than everybody around spending lavishly only to make yourself feel big number five because of fear of the future no people are concerned to save for the future and they are not they are not spending for today the man is you know desire so that in my old age i will have money and it's not spending so that it will live till old age oyo kun e kun yo si ma sha ni yan yo fe ma lati ma ko wojo nitori ojo ogo re si mo ko si ni sha ni yan to ko wojo fun ojo ni number 6 we have problems because there is a basic fundamental disagreement between the husband and the wife on how the money in the family ought to be spent e ke fa ni tori pe eja eye de ati ai fo nso kan laarin oko ati aya ni padu won o se nowo nbe laarin won they have different perspectives about money bi won se nbo won se wo wo yato sira won different sets of priorities in the family bi awon kan ti o gbe to e to ga ninu okan won yato ninu ebi different interests in the family awon kan ti won pe o yato si ara won and therefore they have different ideas on where the money ought to go nitori na won ni ero to yato ni pa bi to ye ki owo na lo and because of that there is always a disagreement and argument on how money should be spent in the family nitori na ija ti ija ye de yo ma wa ni pa bi won o se na owo na ninu ebi number 7 the reason why we have problems in the family concerning money e ke je re di ti a fi ni isoro ni pa owo ninu ebi selfishness caring for self and buying things for self without considering other members of the family number 8 over indulgence and covetousness spending money on things that don't have any lasting value on the family expensive entertainment eh ki eniyan ma sha lejo to gaju agbara lo only to impress people when he is not impressing his wife and children not spending on them lati le ma mu ori awon eniyan ya sugbon ki o ma mu ori awon ma ti yawo re ya no in proverbs chapter 21 verse 17 ninu we owo ri kokan le logun ese iketa di logun we told this and it's a word of caution a word of warning as e so ile fun ile si je oro isun ra ti ati oro ikilo that you are spending your family after you have you know giving your tithes and your offering to God your family is number 1 And in Proverbs chapter 21 verse 17, he that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. And so you see these problems are caused in families. I see I have more reasons to give you why we have problems in our family on spending. 
him. Number nine, the reason we have problems in spending is because of what we call impulsive buying, buying on emotion. Buy now and think later. You don't think at all before the buying. No plan, no budget. You just put money in your pocket. And then you are going outside. Then you see something. Your emotions rise up. And you feel, I must get that thing. You buy now and think later. That's what we call impulsive buying. Number 10, the reason we have problems with money in the family. Shaky and shady investments. You see the program, a project of getting rich quick. When a friend comes to you and he says, if we take that business and we do it, you'll get money in one year. And so all your money, you invest it upon something that will not bring any result out. They don't pay off, that is, they are not profitable at all. And the reason you have lost your money that way is because you do it now and then you are thinking later of the consequences. You see, in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Verse 22. He that hastes to be rich has an evil eye and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. Reason number 11 why we have problems in families on money. Materialistic love. Having love for material things that may not be useful at all to the family. You don't think of the value and the use of the thing you are buying. You just spend money on them, put money on them without thinking of the essential things the family would need. Number 12, we call it unwise purchase. Look at me here. You see, advertisers, they are taught to get money out of your pocket. You see those billboards on the road, whenever you are going on the way, you see a large signboard. The writers have studied psychology. They have studied how to influence the mind of man to take a decision which they want, not a decision that will profit you. When you read those billboards, there will be something within you to tell you, go and buy that thing. A wise purchase. Do you know something when you go to the King's Way or to Chalarams or any shop? Understand that those people are trained in getting money out of your pocket. In the arrangement of the things they have in the shop to attract your attention. When you get into the shop, especially a supermarket. Now you bought the things you really need, the things you really want. And you when you put that when you put those things in the tray. And you are coming very near where the cashier is to pay your money. They arrange some other things there in a very nice way. Things that you really don't need. But the arrangement is so attractive. Because they have 
use the psychology of selling. You say, wait, I've not finished. I, I must take this thing. You take that. Then, oh, you know, the paper they put on the bottle, they so make it very look nice. And you know, it's not the paper you are going to eat. It's the thing inside. And because of the colorful paper, which is just the method of advertisement, we make a wise purchasing. Even the people that are not educated in psychology, you go to the market, and as you are going, on, as you are going along, the woman selling gari will taste it and say, this is wonderful. I've never seen this like before. And then as you are going, Madam, come now. Your husband will eat this one, now one for you. That's not what you came to the market to buy. But because this woman can talk, trained in experience to get money from your pocket, you say, let me buy a little. And then you buy. Before you get to where you see what you really want, somebody else said, this has just come. And you know these young boys that are selling, uh, you know, clothes uh, for children, clothes for adults, and clothes for everybody. They dangle it like this and tell you, Mama, you never got this one. You need this. Now, because of that, without thinking and making your plan on spending, you just buy and buy and buy. Now, money has finished. Number 13, why we suffer? Why we have problems in, in, um, in spending money? I call it saving and suffering. You put the money somewhere. You like a bulging bank account. But you are suffering. You are not spending the money. The money is supposed to be spent. Spent wisely and reasonably. Number 14. <laughs> Loving money more than your wife. You marry your money, you divorce your wife. You keep your money to your bosom, near your heart, and then your wife can stay afar off. You carry your money on your shoulder, you never carry your children on the shoulder. You watch your money, you protect your money, you never watch your wife and protect your wife. Your money is becoming fat, your wife is becoming lean. That's why we have problems in money. And in the marriage, if your if your money does not grow lean and your wife grow fat, you have a problem. If it's your children and your wife that is getting lean and then your money is getting fat, that's a problem. That means you are overrating money above everything in life, above everybody in life. You are trusting your money more than you trust God. Do you see number 15 why we have problems in money? In my, in, uh, that is in managing money in the family. Squandering money. Foolish spending. Uncontrolled spending that has no plan. Number, number 16. Canal simple spending on women outside and the only woman inside has no money to spend. That's why we have problems. When you put all your money, you put it on children outside, women outside, things and people outside, and the people living with you, they have no food to eat. This is number 17 why we have problems in spending money. Operating habitually on the credit system that is on borrowing. So that every month when you get your money, you are paying out debt every time. You are never free. Now, number 18. Unwise independent spending. Independent, that means you never discuss it with your wife, with your husband. The money comes in without.
without any discussion, any agreement, you are just spending. Number 19, failure to discuss finance with your partner. That's why we have problems in our spending money. The husband and the wife, they never talk about it. They never sit down to say, this is the amount that has come in. How do we spend? Reason number 20. Failure to learn from your past mistakes in the wrong use and the wrong spending of money. You see, life is a school. And our mistakes are supposed to teach us to become wiser for tomorrow. Now, I want to help you to see whether you have a problem or not. Do you have a viral to write with you? If you have a viral, can you raise it up and let me see? This is a good class. Now, in all the questions I'll be asking now, this is personal to you. Between you and your wife, you write yes or no. Now, I'm to help you to make you see how you have been spending money. Now, when I read out question number one, you think about your life, you think about your family, you think about your spending, then you write yes or no. Number one, do I owe for small day-to-day -day expenditure, like rice, like gari, like little, little things like homo, like soap, do I owe money? to the people who are selling on small, small day-to-day -day expenditures. Don't let anybody spy what you are writing. Now number two. Do I have to borrow money to pay for fixed expenses like my house rent, instrumental paying, or paying back my debt? The things that are fixed, I know I have to spend money on. Do I have to borrow money to pay for them? Yes or no? Number three. Am I unable to, to say how much I spend? That is how much money I need each month for my regular expenses? If somebody just asks me, how much do you spend every month? Do you really need every month to meet your normal expenses? Do I know it? Number four, do I shuffle funds around? That is, I originally set a particular amount of money to buy this thing, and then in the middle of the month, I just change my mind and I spend it on another thing. Do I shuffle funds around using cash originally set aside for other purposes? Yes or no? Number five. Do I now borrow money to buy some items which in the past I could buy freely without borrowing money? Yes or no? Number six. Am I taking new loan to pay old loan? That is, I owe, I owe Peter money. And Peter is saying, bring money, bring money. I go to Paul to borrow uh, money from Paul to pay the money I owe Peter. Do I do that? Yes or no? Number seven. Do I find it necessary to depend on extra income to make ends meet? Number eight. Have I been repeatedly unsuccessful in saving for the near future needs? That is, I need some furniture at home. I need a fan at home. I need some other necessary things at home. And I'm almost always saying, I will save for it, I will save for it, I will save for it, but it has never been. 
be impossible for me. So have I been repeatedly unsuccessful in saving money for these future needs? Number nine, have I and my wife been having frequent arguments based on money problems? Yes or no? Number ten, do I have to engage in suspicious, dishonest business uh, so as to be able to provide for myself and the family? Number 11. Does my list of things I've just got to have now keep on growing no matter how many of the items I buy? That is, you know, every time I just tell myself I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. And no matter how many of those things I buy, the things I say I need, they keep on growing. If I need 10 things and I buy 3 out of them, I see that I need 12. Now, if I buy 5 again, I see that I need 13. Does my need of things I've just got to have, does that need keep growing no matter how many things I've bought? Uh, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes are you writing down the answers? Personal answers? You're wonderful. Number 12. Do I find myself hesitant and unwilling to pay my tithes from my income or to give anybody in need any amount of money? Yes or no? I've asked you 12 questions. And... Uh, some of the answers are yes and some are no. Look at your paper, am I right? Some answers are yes, some answers are no. Am I right? The ones for yes, look at it very well. They are more than the ones for no. Don't let anybody spy your paper. Now, the answers for yes are more, am I right? Okay. If the answers for yes are more, that means you have problem. That means you do not know how to spend very well. It's a test I've given you to make you know how people just spend. And people do not know how to control their spending. And money makes them unhappy and sad instead of helping them in the family. You know, some people say, if I have more money, all my problems are solved. My brother, my sister, remember when you were on level 04? Money was never sufficient. They promoted you to level 06. Did it become sufficient? No. They promoted you to level 08. Did it uh, become sufficient? No, you go to level 09. Was it sufficient? No. Listen to me. More money has a way of generating more spending. When more money comes in, there will be more things to buy. Am I right? They are never sufficient. The money is never sufficient. And it is because we have no wisdom and understanding on how to control our spending. After I told that section one for some failure. Now you see we have our faults and our failures in spending money in the family. I'm going to number two, which is a face for fun. Now you see to be able to have money to spend, we need to believe God. That God will supply. And in Proverbs chapter 10, Proverbs chapter 10, reading from Verse 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with his slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. 
Let's also get rich. To become diligent in your work. Faithful in service. Confident in the place of your work. But if you are lazy and indolent and you know unwilling to work, of course you will not be able to have. In verse 5. He that gathered in, gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Blessings are upon the head of the just. But violence covers the mouth of the wicked. In chapter 12, verse 14. Chapter 12, verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with, the, with good by the fruit of his mouth, but the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. 12, 14. In chapter 13 of Proverbs, verse 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. From verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, not after the tradition which he received of all. Verse 10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. You see, you ought to find work and have good labor. Don't be in a type of dubious, dishonest business. Then by the work you do, God will provide for you. There are many types of work you can do. Now you ought to find out with your friends or from your friends and you know, discuss together. That's why when it's fellowship, if you have a problem on getting job, be free and discuss with, you know, brothers and sisters who are here with us. Our brothers and sisters they are wonderful. There are times they know that there are vacancies and there are places of work. They come to tell the ministry. We announce it, and many people have got jobs that way. Now, apart from getting money through the labor of your hand, God also provides in various ways. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. But God shall supply all your need according to his riches, not your riches, his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In James chapter 4 verse 2. God provides for those who will pray and pray in faith. In James 4 2, ye lost and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Because ye ask not. Do you know if you depend upon God, God will make you to have sufficient for you to spend and for your family to spend? We are told in chapter 8 of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 17 and 18. And thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand has gotten me this well. But thou shalt remember. But thou shalt remember. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get well. That he may establish his covenant that is well unto thy fathers 
as it is this day. Ki o ki o le fi di majemu re si idi majemu re si obura fun awon baba re kale bi o ti ri bi o ni yi. God has promised that he will provide for us. Olorun ti se le ri ki o yo pe ti fun wa. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Inu we oni wa tori karun. Verse 8 verse 19. Ese e ko kan di logun. Ecclesiastes 5 19. Oni wa tori karun ese e ko kan di logun. Every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth and has given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. So God has the power, the knowledge, and the provision to give us the supply to our needs. Now that you have money does not mean your family will be happy. If you don't know how to spend that money, that you have money does not mean that your children will be cared for. If you don't know how to spend that money on the family and on the children, I'm concluding with steps to financial freedom. You want to be free from the anxiety and the worry and the problems that money brings to the family. You want to understand how you can spend in a wise way. In a way that the money is no, it's not a problem to you but a blessing, a privilege for you to have. Now keep your attention clear. I'm focus on me here because I'm giving you four points on how to have financial freedom. How your money will be your servant and not your master. How you will use your money but your money will not use you. How your money will make you fat as the money is growing lean not how you will be lean and your money will be growing fat. Uh, you will not come under the curse because of the load of money, but you will come under the blessing of God. Now that you have got the money by working, you receive the salary at the end of the month. Or you receive your pay because uh, you know you are trading and now you are getting money. Now for those of us who have not married yet, all these things are very useful to you. But, but I'm now talking particularly to those who are married. Step number one. Settle your financial differences between the husband and the wife. Because financial differences is one of the biggest causes of disharmony and problem in marriage. So step number one, sit down to discuss financial matters together. Poor communication leads to financial foolishness. When you sit down to talk about money, about spending, what are you going to say? Talk about your priorities for spending. Talk about the necessity to save a little of what comes in. Sin point any area you have recently spent foolishly. Agree on some rules in the family whereby you'll be spending for better family budget. If since you have married you have never done that, you should do that today. If you never talk about money, that's why the problem is there. If most of you have never sat down, have never sat down to discuss your priorities, your experiences, your foolishness, your mistakes, and you know your ways of spending money, there will be mistakes more that will come into the family. If there is no money, sit down and talk.
talk about it. If there is little money, be frank, be open, sit down and talk about it in the family. If there are needs to be spent upon, sit down together and talk about it. Number two, educate yourself about money management. Study the principles of spending money. You say, where can I study that? The book of Proverbs talks about money so much. You say, where else can I study about that? The parables of Jesus Christ. You see, two thoughts of the parables of Jesus Christ talk about money. Where else can I study that? Because in the Old Testament, there is mention about, you know, family living together, spending together, rejoicing together, agreeing together, and, um, you know, learning together. Many, many things you can learn. Study the principles of spending money, about money management. Study on budgeting. Now, budgeting means, uh, you know, before you ever spend the money, you sit down, you say, what do we actually need? And then you see how to make the budget to meet, you know, the, the, the uh, financial demand on the family. Study about spending. Now, those of us who are working in offices, let me ask you. Have you ever studied about uh, paying tax? Oh, you say that's the problem of the government. No, it is your problem. Have you ever filled any form on, you know, paying your tax? If you don't pay any form, the government will be taking the highest amount from you. Before you fill the form, talk to people who understand, who know how to fill that form. Sit down together with your wife and study on budgeting, spending, taxes, and investments. You know, you go to your friend and you see that your friend has a pole tree at the back, you know, of the house. Without ever discussing with your wife, you come back home and you say, well, I'm going to spend some money on, on raising up a pole tree. Before your wife knows what is happening, the carpenters have come, they have built the thing, you have got to, you know, you have got to get chicken and they are all there. And you bought 300 before the next week, 100 of them have died. Then you, you call your wife and say, ah, what's the problem? The thing you should have done before to discuss, you now want to discuss. Study together on saving, on credit, many things you can study about with your wife, with your husband. Number three, avoid debt like sickness. What is debt? When the sum total of what you owe is more than the sum total of what you have, what you own, that's the that case you are in the red, you are in debt. How can we avoid debt? Already if you are owing some amount of money, sit down to plan how you will pay back. If possible, talk to the person you are owing. Tell him you will not be able to pay everything just at once will be paying instrumentally. If that is not possible, if he says, I want everything all together, telling my brother, my sister, or you know where, my uncle, I do not have all the money right now. Look at the money that comes into you. If you are owing, let's say, 300 naira, by self-control, by self-discipline, will I be able to pay 60 naira every every month and the man says and you know you can do that but the man says i don't want 60 naira every month just give me all the 300 that will take you five months you say okay give me chance the first month you put 60 naira aside you know that is not your money it's like 
left, you have paid it back. You will never touch it. Second month, you add the 16 naira. Third month, add the 16 naira. At the end of the five months, you have 300 naira to go and pay to that man. Do you know what happens when you have paid all your debt? The heavy load on your head is lifted. The fear that comes to your heart when you see the man, you are owing money, that fear goes away. The bondage that makes your house a prison yet for you, the bondage is taken away. The joy that has gone away from you because of the debt, that joy will come back. You'll be happy. You will be a free citizen of Nigeria. You will not say, who is that one coming? Am I at home? Now, my children, you do you think I'm at home now? What will you tell that man when he comes? There will be no necessity of that when you are paid all your debts. And when you see the person at the Bible study so at the fellowship, and the usher said, uh, Brother, sit down here. On that row is that man that you owe money. You take it, you say, I'm going to the toilet for. Then you get to the toilet. When you are coming from the toilet, let you go to the other side so you don't see that man. You see, after you have paid all your debt, there will be total freedom from your heart. Now, agree on a family priority list and stick to it. You see, that means to sit down with your wife, with your Bible in your hand. Now, you ask your wife, Now, my wife, this month you'll be a new mom. What do we need in this house? House for this month. The wife says, uh, such and so. Such and so. Such and so. Such and so. Then you say, but have you forgotten this? Oh, yes, we need that thing. And then you write a long list of what you need for this month. That's not the end. You say, my wife now, which is number one, the most important that if we don't have, we just can't do without. You are rearranging the list of what you have written down from the most important, the urgent, the uh, the one that is you know just important you just cannot do without the one that are less important you must decide that before you ever go to the market you know the, what happens to us is that we take a salary and why we are taking a salary you have 300 naira in the pocket and you say i need something you are not treating those things now. You go to Kingsway. You go to Chalaran. You go to the market. You go to the supermarket. And you are going around like a big man. And then all the people are saying, come, buy, come, buy, come, buy. Before you come back, 300 naira is gone. And then it's also you have bought all those things. You say, ah, but I think I need this one. I didn't remember. Ah, I didn't buy this one. Before you ever get out of the house, decide what you need before you go and buy. Don't ever go and visit a large um, shop with money in your pocket if you have not decided what to buy. You cannot go to market and not see what to buy. Even when you don't need it, you will buy the toy. You will buy, you will buy ball. You will buy some shade. You will buy, uh, you know, you will buy chairs. You will buy sleepers. You will forget that Gary is important, but there's no Gary in the market you have gone. That's why you mustn't just foolishly go to the market with all your money in your pocket. Leave the money behind. And 
then decide on what you actually need. Now, how do we make budget? Now, this is the steps you need to take in making a budget. The money is in your hand, now you want to buy. Number one, what do we have coming in each month? What is the monthly take-home pay that comes to the family? Decide that. Number two, what are the fixed expenses on house rent, installmental pay, or food, household spending, on the car maintenance, on transportation, on the time, on the little amount you ought to save for the near future. I'm going to give you some figures there for the credit to rise. After you are taking away your time and the tax has been removed. Now, you break the money that remains with it to three sections. 10% that is one out of 10 should go for saving for uh, emergency or whatever spending I may have unknowingly in the future, 10%. Then 20%, 2 out of 10, will go for the debt that you owe. Because you see, if you don't plan about paying the debt, the debt will be there all the time. But if you are paying it little by little by little, eventually everything will go. Then it is 70%, 7 out of 10 parts that will go for the regular living expenses. It's called the 10-20-70 system of spending. The financial counselor said that this is the best way of spending. After you have removed your tithes and you have paid your tax to the government, all that remains, you don't spend everything that remains. 10% for savings. 20% for debt. 70% for your normal, regular living expenses. Now, what's left then for the variable expenses? When you take away your total monthly fixed expenses from the total monthly income, all that remains is for variable spending. You know, giving this man this and helping this other one, uh, doing this little thing over there. Now, you must also sit down to discuss in budgeting how do we now reasonably and wisely spend what is available for the family. Now, you see, I'm very concerned about our families and how we spend money. Because it's not only for married people. Many times, our young brothers and young sisters have, tried, have started a business and they have not been able to get on well. They can, they can sell, they can work, they can trade, they can have money, but because they don't know financial management, the businesses are crumbling all the time. Money is a tool for the provision of our needs. Money is a tool for sharing blessings with other people. Money is a tool to be able to provide satisfactorily for the needs of the family. Don't let it become your master. Have wisdom in spending. And then you'll be able to reach the goal of financial freedom in your life. Have you got anything today? Let's rise up and pray.
Whatever we have learned, let us bring it to the Lord. Let us tell the Lord we are sorry for the foolish spending of the past. Now we want to be spending wisely in such a reasonable way to be profitable for the family. If you don't have money, talk to God about it. He'll provide for you. If you have, think and plan and study about how to spend. You will accept with me that if we listen to know any other message again, this message is something we need to go and look at all what we have put down and look at them and know what else what has brought us to a level we do not like or what has made us great an area we can improve more call upon the name of the lord that this message will become a blood tonic in the lifeless of many family and in our own family too you will accept with me that this message need to be listening to listening to and listening to again what a powerful one call upon the name of the lord now in many family that it look like irreversible that God himself will intervene and the grace of the Lord is surely take data control in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray our mighty father we thank you Lord for great opportunity you give to us in the Palai Bible Church of Charlotte Faith. we thank you Lord because of a great message like this and without doubt, we know in our in our hearts there's nothing that will have been bigger that you will have done for us today. Father, we saw mistake, we saw correction, we saw amendment, we saw commendation, and we saw approval. We pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ in all areas. We need to accept what is wrong and make it and make correction and to keep up what is good. Father, you give to us in Jesus' name. In all Lyria, every one of us we have done mistake and we find ourselves. Father, you will put you will pull us out in Jesus' name. And your name is going to be glorified. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us be seated. I welcome everyone first to today's service and then if you will agree with me, you will know that uh, there is no message we will have listened to more than this and then I believe that every one of us we will still go through all what we have put down. Uh, you know when you are in the class, uh, many teachers have told us that uh, many of us, what we learn is just 10%. And then after we left the class, it's all what we go through. It's, especially somebody like me, and that's if I learn five percent. Because if I'm in the class, <laughs> what I think is my family, my a lot of things. So sometimes I don't even understand the teacher until I sit down alone to go through. Or so it is my belief that maybe when we are on our bed or when we sit down alone, we will be able to go through all those things one by one again and see where we have been approved where we have been condemned where we need correction and where mistake has come to me there's nothing god cannot redeem there's nothing he cannot redeem as far as we can kneel down and tell him that almighty god i want this i want this and i know by the power and the blood of jesus christ testimony is our way in jesus name 
and the power and the blood of Jesus Christ will, will not do it in Jesus name. Once again, I welcome every one of us to today study. Two of those series is on the what do they call this thing? Is there anyway? Do you understand? So uh this one i've not recorded the cd but if i can do it before tomorrow i will make sure it's available and then uh, i want you to know as a result of marriage series we have been posting as i was telling them in the workers meeting yesterday god has started enlarging uh our coast again uh, i told them because of those people are not here there was a brother named from the uh, the Kota. I, the, I remember the name of the country very well. Yesterday, that sent its message, and then appreciate all what we are doing, and uh, um, tell us to keep it more. There's the other message, and then there's the another brother that said by August there's a probability he joined us from Calabar. So, but I'm still because I was telling him to collect letter from the from his pastor so that he should let us see the letter from the pastor so that we can be able to tell pastor that out. Then that oh, we are hosting somebody because he's going to he's coming to Virginia Tech for research. So let us continue that God will continue to help us as we are reaching more. More yesterday, I was just thinking that the internet does not need visa to go and preach. <laughs> it just went to the, it went to the quarter street, and then that's just what God can do. That's what internet can do. Almighty God will continue to help us in Jesus' name, and the grace of the Lord will continue to be with every one of us in Jesus' name. I want to thank the Kepas family for the Father Day's provision. I pray that Almighty God will continue to be with you in Jesus' name. Although we are still meeting you in the workers' meeting, you know how busy we have, or the, we too we need you. We are not happy about it. God will continue to help you in Jesus' name. Anytime we are making decisions, it's always difficult for us uh, without seeing you. But we know by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God will make the thing balance in the name of Jesus Christ. Your head will not be counting in Jesus' name. And your labor will not be in vain in Jesus' name. We will not miss any one of us. We will not miss you when we get there in Jesus' name. Um, we talk about a lot of things about finances. Financial yesterday. But some of them are with stay. It's personal discussion. Personal family uh, challenges. But God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. And then, brother, father, Ro has deposited hundred dollars into the account. I think we can just use the card to pay it direct to the church. So that means we have paid about uh, 200, 300 plus. We have almost paid about that five hundred dollars. If we look at what has come from the Kefas Kevin family, and if we, <laughs> I want to, please, I'm very sorry, but I want to see if it has been more than five hundred dollars. All of that money should go to our account. We too, we need it. <laughs> don't, tell, let, don't let the pastor that I hear that I say this. <laughs> it is where well in Jesus' name. <laughs> so, but let us calculate it so that because we need more money for convention, we need a lot of money, we need a lot more for insurance, we need more, to, more money for women program, we need money for Thanksgiving. Do all this one, God is going to help us in this. Uh, do not let us forget the for all of us who are men. I may send the brother letter to us so that we can be following up as I and him is getting because his stay is going to be in the country by August 11. So that's how far. But I, I told him that we like him to come with a letter from the pastor okay, so that we can be saved. Almighty God is going to help us in Jesus' name. If there's any other thing apart from the the women program, they have chosen their dates, and it's coming up in the August 5th. So let us be preparing. 
the Thanksgiving will be November 26th. All of the, both of them is starting by four o'clock. The convention, I know by the grace of the Lord, I don't know how we are going to do it, but I know we are going to do it. And God is going to do it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Lord, do, even if let's say we take up on Saturday. Because they said the hotel is one hundred and eighteen dollars, then that's if we are going to use three days. That's about three hundred and something dollars we calculated on Saturday, plus all other expenses, plus money they said we should bring for convention, plus all the program we have. So if if we because already somebody like me, I've taken permission from my place of work. My wife has taken permission. But the financial challenges is giving us concern. So even if, if and I know she too she hearing us the all say, even let's say on Saturday evening we take up by twelve o'clock midnight. We get to North Carolina by five o'clock or something like that. We worship with them on Sunday, then we come back. So that first thing will be the particle of the convention blessing. Second one, we we see the place ourselves, and the third one, I know Pastor that that will be happy. That day. so God is going to help us. In the, that's option that I have. If we are not going on Thursday, already I am my wife, and I know Brother Stephen is ready. I don't know about uh, the Kefa families, but I know we we are ready. And God is going to help every one of us in Jesus' name. Um, as I've told us, the confession letter should started running out. I mean, women program letter and then Thanksgiving. I'm even thinking, can't we combine the two letters together? Or is it not possible? Confession and then Thanksgiving. Because they are so close <laughs> to be giving out two, two letters and uh, so, Brad Stephen, maybe we work on that. Uh, eh? We shouldn't do it. Ah, is it confession I'm talking about? I'm very sorry. Thanksgiving. Oh, Thanksgiving, eh, eh, it should be different. I'm very sorry. It's okay. I just talked about it yesterday. Okay. Then there's a website we are paying for $5, $5 every month. Uh, there's a letters already. They have put all those letters already. So I will give you the website, I will give you the... So the only thing is that you will just adjust what needs to be adjusted. But all kind of letter you want to write, either Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day, talk of anything, it's already there. So, and then if that one is not even enough, you can write them, and you need a letter about this something. Uh, uh, but they are uh, okay that's okay uh, uh, but already we we surprised for that one and god is going to help us as we are doing so in jesus name if they are saying that thing let us continue to pray for the church and uh, i know god is taking us to higher places and by the power and the blood of jesus we are going to get there in jesus. i'm not doubting i'm not doubting because if you see what i'm saying you know that it, the Paul Bible Church of Charlotte cannot be. I don't know the language I can speak. So, you yeah, are no matter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And the devil is afraid. He's afraid of us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, the, the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for us in Jesus' name. There's nobody we cannot touch, there's nobody we cannot pity, there's nobody we cannot. Even if the Saudi Arabia <laughs> said no. People are able to tell them it's good. Yeah. It's when you serve me. So if there's any other thing, I will let us know. Let us bring our title offering. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, we thank you, Lord, because of the joy of having you. We thank you, Lord, because of celebration of your death and then uh, rise up on Sunday. And it is as a result of the death we are here today at the day of the Pentecost that the Holy Ghost come down. 
We thank you Lord because of the spiritual gift you are giving to every one of us and uh, you have let the message keep down Lord we know how powerful message is and we know how powerful you are using us as a tool to other people I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ as we are winning many back to the kingdom of God Father our own family too Lord you will build them for us in Jesus name and your name is going to be glorified thank you for everything you have done in everybody's life in this church you are worthy of our praise as we have continued to go in the service of today you will follow us and your grace is going to be sufficient for the children continue to be with them you have been proven to us they are generous by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ more than the Jesus was preaching yesterday he was saying all these children more than Jesus himself they are going to be greater Lord I have those people who are even greater in our church and even Jesus these children they will be greater than every one of us and every one of those people we have mentioned in Jesus name and your name is going to be glorified thank you Lord because you are the Lord that answer prayer in Jesus name we pray as we are putting our offering to the offering back let's continue to call upon the name of the Lord Father let my offering be accepted Ibe where is your brother I mean Cain where is your brother just because he presented offering that is not accepted before him let's call upon the name of the Lord and by the power and the blood of Jesus this morning our offering shall be accepted before him and his name is going to be glorified thank you O Lord because you are the Lord that answer prayer in Jesus name we pray I think it's time for go time I mean for praise and worship and then receive a praise come the Lord for his faithfulness. Let's bless the Lord once again this morning because in his presence there's fullness of joy. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. There's no place we'd rather be than in your presence. In your presence there's fullness of joy. In your presence there's peace. There's strength. There's love. Everything we need is in your presence. Dwelling place forever. 
our hands to the Lord this morning. For this church, put the hands to the Lord this morning. Our God is good. Say, our God is good. We thank God. Are you ready to praise the Lord this morning? I am. What about you? Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise. 
Lord this morning. He is in this place. I can see the mighty hand of the Lord in our service today, and I pray that God will continue to speak to every one of us in Jesus' name. We have been the source of encouragement to church in Atlanta, they, and they have decided that nothing will stop them from continuing to praise the name of the Lord as they are doing. And Almighty God will continue to help them in Jesus' name. Flesh will not take over in the name of Jesus Christ. And the grace of the Lord will continue to be with every one of us in Jesus' name. It's time for Bible reading. We shall read from the book of Acts, chapter 7. The book of Acts, chapter 7. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charon, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Charon. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on, yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Canaan and great afflictions. And our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren. And Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred, threescore and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died he and our fathers and were carried over into Sychem and laid in the sepulcher that Abraham bought for a sum of money of the sons of Emor, the father of Sychem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. The same dealt subtly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live. In which time Moses was born, and was exceeding fair, and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up, and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them. But they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Madian, where he begat two sons. 
And when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight. And as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled, and durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning and am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses, whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our fathers would not obey but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them. And I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him an house. Howbeit, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. May God bless his word in our heart in Jesus. We shall listen to Koresa.
That song, I pray that God will continue to be with the choir and Atlanta in Jesus' name. There's a two things I want to say. I remember only one now, and then um, I'm sorry, Brasil. He didn't tell me to tell anybody this, but since he told me yesterday, I've been loving, comfortable, and I didn't want to say it so that will be anything with the pastor will come and say it on the copy. But see, I will not be able to ask him that Brother Stephen should have tell people because it's not drug. It's not anything. So, uh, two things I want us to do. He's planning to move to, uh, to go back to Nigeria in August. I've been so worried that Almighty God will follow him in Jesus' name. Uh, I don't want him to use more than two weeks. And I know God can do it. So you all of you will pray along with me that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ as he's going to get to Nigeria, all what is needed. You know how we are going to miss him in the church. 
that what God will provide in Jesus name more than his expectation by the time we get there. Because if we started praying for now, maybe God can even perform it that you will not go. To me, there's nothing possible for God. So let us continue to keep it in prayer. I've told you many times, I have way of praying. When things bother me, the only thing is just stay beside my bed midnight or wake up when anybody is there and present it to him. So my concern, as I only tell everybody that your concern is my concern. So my concern should be your concern now. So please put put me and him in prayer. That by the power and the blood of Jesus, that God will not let him stay more than two weeks. He's not cause. It's not. We will not stay more than two weeks in Nigeria before you get back to us in Jesus' name. And all what is named by the power and the blood of Jesus, that God will take care of everything. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. It's time for the message for our brother, brother Ben. Praise the Lord. I see that I have about 40 minutes, which is more than enough. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for the wonderful time that we've had since we came here this morning. Father, we thank you for the word of, the word of exhortations. Father, we thank you for the message on the pulpit to hear how we need to manage our lives and to manage our resources. Lord in heaven, even your son Jesus, when he came down on earth, he spoke about the parable of the talents. Father, we saw how he spoke about the parables of the talents, the person who got ten and the person who got five and the person who got two and what they did with what you give to them. Father, content, content is the message from this morning. Father, we pray that Lord in heaven, you write in our hearts the spirit of content. Father, Lord in heaven, you write in our heart the, the spirit of constraint. Father, Lord in heaven, the spirit of budgets. Even you in heaven, you budgeted when you created the heaven and earth. You started on day one and you started. You had a structure. You designed six days. You made your design on the seven days you rested. It was written. Father, you have told us to write, to design, to budget, to structure ourselves. Father, Lord in heaven, anyone listening to this message, anyone here this morning, Lord in heaven, that is not structured, that their life is not designed, Father, we pray that by divine power you will design their life in Jesus' name. Father, you've given us the spirit of hope. You've given us the spirit of strength, the spirit of perseverance, and the spirit of faith, and not the spirit of fear. Father, Lord in heaven, you've given us wisdom. For you say in your word, for lack of wisdom, my people perish. For lack of knowledge, my people perish. Father, we know that we will never perish because we have wisdom and we have knowledge that has descended from heaven to us through your son Jesus and through your word the scriptures father as we continue the day Lord in heaven talk to us Lord in heaven let your scriptures descend on each and every one of us this morning and that father as we live here we will digest the scriptures that we have heard in the morning and the scriptures that we're about to hear right now father it will stay in our heart through the week and through our lifetime that will continue to meditate on your word father we bless your name we we'll thank you for everything in jesus name we pray amen praise the lord can you all be seated you're all welcome in jesus name so somehow um you know, what I'm going to talk about this morning ties a little bit into the scriptures that we heard today and what our pastor mentioned. So the title of what do you, so what do you do when you are at a crossroad? Meaning at a time when you are afraid. You know, our pastor was talking about Brother Steve. I was laughing at the back there. I said, that is actually the title of my message. 
when you are at the crossroad, when you believe that you are going to lose something, or when you believe that when you are very angry and upset, if somebody pushes that button, that button that makes you upset, what do you do? And we'll look briefly at the life of Moses and the life of Job. Like I said, we have about 35 minutes and we'll look at the scriptures to look at. The example that Moses said for us and what Job did. Amen. When you are at the crossroad, you know, before we go to the store, I'll ask my wife, have you made a list? Let me look at the list. You know, she's a witness. I tell her, if we go to the store, I want, I'll tell her no. We didn't come to buy that. We came with a budget. And this is the reason why we are here. She looks at me funny somehow. When we go home, she's going to say I preach about her on the pulpit. Amen. May the Lord continue to, to bless her as she deals with me. You know, so, so it's because of the fact that I understand, you know, that if the, nothing is budgeted, it's the truth. And I'll tell her, my friend, is the truth. No, we are not buying this. We are not buying that. We are not buying this. This is what we've come for, and that's what we will buy. And I say, make your list. You know, ask her, what do we need at home? Can you please make a list? You know, she makes lists sometimes, or sometimes she writes them down. Sometimes she verbally says it. So when she verbally says it, it's written in my brain. We go to the store. We purchase those things because those are the things we are arranged to buy. Praise the Lord. So that was the message of today. So you know that. And, and it is very important to all of us. The reason why I do that is that it's content. You need to be content with what you have. Let's look at the story of the talents. The person who got to say, I know you are a wicked God. Sorry, a wicked master. I know that you want to reap from where you have not sown. Amen? So he went and hid the talent. But if we look at what the person who got 10 and 5 did, it multiplied. Amen. So it's content. The person who got to was not content. I will tell you that if you are not able to make a budget, if you are earning $5, even if you earn $1 million, you will not be able to make a budget. You know, my father always told me when I was small, I'm sorry that I always refer to him, my earthly father. He said, no matter how much you make, no matter how little, save a cent. Save a cent. He said, it, it, it pinches you and brings out pain, but when you continue to save little by little, you get used to saving It's the same thing because if you are used to set, setting aside, then you get used to giving. Amen. So we as believers and the children of God, we need to set our lives straight. You know, I haven't come to the pulpit to, to, to um, to continue to to continue the message from this morning but i always like to give summary of what we've heard so that it stays in our heart before we hear the next message christ got himself planned christ's life was planned he said i am here for a purpose and he followed what is written for him and when it was time he died for me and you and left structured and planned it was not anyhow. Prophecy, if you read the Old Testament, Christ's life was prophesied before he even came. And he followed that structure. He said, I have come to fulfill the promise of my father, the will of my father, not my will. I have come because there's a structure. It is written. It is all written, day one, day two, what I'm going to do until I get to this age, I'll fulfill my ministry and die for you all, then I'll go back. It is the same thing. If you are not used to planning your life, your financial life, it is going to be difficult for you to plan your life structurally. You know, at work, 
people who know me well, they know that everything I do is on purpose. There is nothing that is not designed. You see, every decision that I make at work is designed. It is purposeful. Most decisions that I make in my own life is completely designed and purposeful. I say, Father in heaven, this is the design that I have made, but it is in your hands. You will fulfill it the way that you want. Uh, let me tell you, if you are not well structured and designed, it is going to be difficult to make it. Go and take a look at the life of the people who have made it. When I get into work, the structure from when I get into when I'm leaving, what I need to do is written in my brain. So it is well structured. You see me, one, two, three, four. So it's regimented. And that is what we heard this morning. That before you leave the house, you design to say you're making $5 a month. How much goes into this? Do we need this? Do we need that? It is so structured. So that is written when you get to the store. When you get to the store, you buy exactly what you need. When your life is well designed, you know, I have said that um, just going to school, in my view, does not cut it. Going to school is supposed to be by design. What do I mean by design? You are making an investment. I'm not going to go spend $100,000 and come and earn $10,000 per month going to take you a long time to recoup so by design what you're studying you're looking at what you're putting in and what you're going to get out of it so if your life is not structured financially it becomes very difficult even to serve the Lord himself because then you become disorganized and unstructured because so that even when you are given the ministry we saw our general overseer he's very structured organized he has we are all people who are traveling to a certain destination. We are all structured. So if you are not structured today financially, if you are not structured today in your life, when you wake up in the morning, I encourage you this morning, I encourage you that when you wake up in the morning, set your life. You know, set your life and pray to the Lord, Father, this is my agenda for the day. I commit into your hands. Let your will be done. I want you to try that. You know, to try to be structured. You know, sometimes we, when we have discussion with a pastor, he talks to me about something. I say, this is not required. This is not necessary. And I explain to him the reason why. And I said, this is more important. This is the reason why it is more important. That is how my mind has been set. It says so structured. The reason is because we are the children of God. Heaven is structured. It is not a disorganized place. It's only the kingdom of uh, the Satan that is disorganized. So if you're a child of God, if today you're not organized, my brothers and sisters, I can give you lessons, you know, to get your life together and organize yourself. Because if you don't, I will tell you this because... The message this morning touched me, it's not financially, because it confirms that the way that I'm thinking should be how each and every one of us to think. Because if you become disorganized, it becomes even new, very difficult for you to be organized to follow the word of God to go to heaven. Go and remember this, the, the, the message that we heard this morning. So, uh, taking 10 minutes. So if you see that even when I'm teaching, it is well organized and I'm looking at exactly what needs to go by the grace of the Lord. Amen? That by the will of God, I will tell you that most times, so the Bible verses that I read from the pulpit is the same that I have prepared for, but the message sometimes changes. Amen? From what I have prepared. And what I most times do is that I allow the Lord to lead me as he feels like leading me to teach his word. Amen.